All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning, I am Sarabjit Kaur. The headlines. Five-day Army Commanders Conference to discuss emerging security scenarios and other matters begins today. Second Health Working Group meeting in Goa and Agricultural Chief Scientists meet under India's G20 Presidency to start in Varanasi today. President Draupdi Murmu to confer National Panchayat Awards in New Delhi this morning. Death toll rises to 32 in Bihar Hooch tragedy. IMD forecasts heat wave conditions over West Bengal, Bihar and coastal Andhra Pradesh during the next four days. And in sports, Shelly Singh qualifies for Asian Games, logging second longest jump in India's history. And now the news in detail. The first edition of the biannual Army Commanders Conclave 2023 will be conducted in hybrid format from today. The five-day conference will continue till the 21st of April. It is an apex-level biannual event, which is an institutional platform for conceptual-level deliberations, culminating in making important policy decisions for the Indian Army. On the first day of the conference, Army commanders and other senior functionaries will meet virtually. Later, they will travel to Delhi for balanced physical meetings on matters which require detailed deliberations. Our correspondent reports that the Chief of Defence Staff, the Chief of the Naval Staff and the Chief of the Air Staff will also address the conference. Army Commanders Conference is an apex-level biannual event which is an institutional platform for conceptual-level deliberations culminating in making important policy decisions for the Indian Army. The forum will review the progress on the activities charted out as part of the Year of Transformation 2023 along with progress on Agnipati Scheme and Digitization and Automation Initiatives. During the conference, apex leadership will also brainstorm current and emerging security scenarios and review the operational preparedness of the Indian Army. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh will add the conference on Wednesday. Anand Kumar for AIR News, Delhi. President Draupdi Murmu will inaugurate the National Panchayat Awards Week and confer the National Panchayat Awards at the National Conference on Incentivization of Panchayats Come Award Ceremony in New Delhi today. On the occasion, the President will also address more than 1,500 delegates from across the country. The Ministry of Panchayati Raj will be celebrating National Panchayat Awards Week commencing today to the 21st of this month as part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav 2.0 in the run-up to the National Panchayati Raj Day scheduled on 24th of April. The Ministry has conceptualized a series of thematic conferences based on the theme of Panchayato Ke Sankalpo Ki Siddhi Ka Utsav to celebrate this monumental occasion. The Ministry said that under the series, five national conferences covering nine themes under localization of sustainable development goals through Panchayati Raj institutions and way forward for 2047 will be organized during the week-long celebrations. Union Minister of Rural Development and Panchayati Raj, Giri Raj Singh, Union Minister of State for Panchayati Raj, Kapil Moreshwar Patil and Union Minister of State for Rural Development, Faggan Singh Kulaste, will grace the occasion with their August presence. The second Health Working Group meeting under G20 India Presidency will commence in Goa today. More than 180 delegates from 19 G20 member countries, 10 invited states and 22 international organizations will be participating in the three-day meeting. Additional Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Lava Garwal, briefed the media ahead of the second Health Working Group meeting. He highlighted health priorities and India's leadership role in the Global South. The second Health Working Group meeting of G20 will have discussions on the priorities which include health emergencies prevention, preparedness and response, strengthening cooperation in pharmaceutical sector with focus on access and availability to safe, effective quality and affordable medical countermeasures. The 100th meeting of G20 Working Group in the country will start in Varanasi city of Uttar Pradesh today. The three-day meeting of Agricultural Chief Secretaries, I beg your pardon, meeting of Agricultural Chief Scientists, will start at Hotel Taj and on the first day, the inaugural session will be graced by Union Minister of State for Road Transport and Highways and Civil Aviation, General Retired V.K. Singh. 
The meeting is being organized by the Department of Agricultural Research and Education, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. About 80 foreign delegates from 20 G20 member states will participate in the event. Senior officials from the Ministry of Agriculture and other ministries, including Ministry of External Affairs, will also attend the meeting. A report. Delegates and scientists from different countries have already reached Kashi for the meeting and grand welcome was given to them. The whole Varanasi city is eagerly waiting to welcome the foreign delegates and walls of the city along with the ghats at Holy Ganga are fully decorated with slogans and pictures related to G20 theme. The various issues of agriculture research and development including food security and nutrition, climate smart agriculture, digital agriculture, public-private partnership etc. have been in included for discussion. The important feature will be the millets and other ancient greens international research initiative Maharshi which is also proposed for deliberations as G20 initiative during Indian presidency. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Varanasi. The second meeting of the G20 Digital Economy Working Group DEWG will be commencing this morning in Hyderabad. Union Minister of State for Communication, Dev Singh Chauhan, and Union Minister of State for Social Justice and Empowerment, A. Narayan Swami, will be addressing the meeting during the inaugural session later this morning. Addressing the media conference in Hyderabad last evening, Secretary Mate Y. Alkesh Kumar Sharma said, the deliberations will mainly focus on digital public infrastructure, cyber security and digital skilling. He said delegates from the G20 member countries, invitees and representatives of international organizations will have extensive discussions on actionable deliverables in the priority areas. Tomorrow we'll be moving to the next level and then we have two more working groups where we expect that our priorities should find a proper place and a good understanding and we should be able to come up with a good ministerial declaration on all the three conferences. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back to the Morning News. A two-day global conference on compressed biogas will commence in New Delhi today. The Petroleum and Natural Gas Ministry said the theme of the conference is towards progressive policy framework for a robust CBG foundation and growth. All India Radio is presenting a vignette of select quotes of the Prime Minister from Man Ki Baat as the program will complete its 100th episode this month. Today, in the 67th episode of this special program, let's listen to the excerpts in which the Prime Minister called for giving a boost to handloom products. People, voice and direct dialogue. That's your and our Man Ki Baat. Yes, this is how our Prime Minister connects with millions of countrymen. With the program Man Ki Baat, aired on the last Sunday of every month on All India Radio. This series, which started on October 3, 2014, will complete its 100th episode in April 2023. In the 67th episode of this special program, let's listen to that message of the Prime Minister in which he urged the people to patronize handloom. Like Mahatma Gandhi, Prime Minister Modi too supports our Indian handloom and handicrafts. Whenever he gets a chance, he appeals to the people to go for it because in doing so, they would be actually supporting a weaver or an artisan. This was his tenor in the Man Ki Baat program broadcast on 26th July 2020. Bharat ka handloom, handicraft handicraft बल्कि इसके बारे में हमें ज्यादा से ज्यादा लोगों को बताना भी चाहिए भारत का हैंडलूम और हैंडिका कितना रीच है इसमें कितनी विविधता है कि दुनिया जितना ज्यादा जानेगी उतना ही हमारे लोकल कारीगरों और बुनकरों को लाभ होगा
In Bihar, death toll due to consumption of spurious liquor has mounted to 32, with 10 more casualties in Motihari in East Champaran district. The figure is likely to increase as the condition of 14 people is critical and they are undergoing treatment in several hospitals of Motihar and Muzaffarpur. Motihari SP Kantesh Kumar Mishra said five SHOs and nine chokidars of various police stations have been suspended. 108 people have been arrested and over 6,000 litre liquor seized during the search operations. Central Bureau of Investigation, CBI, recorded statement of Chief Minister of Delhi, Arvind Kejriwal, in the Delhi Excise Policy case at its headquarters in New Delhi yesterday. Earlier, the investigating agency had issued summons to Mr. Kejriwal for questioning in connection with alleged corruption in the formulation and implementation of the now scrapped Delhi Excise Policy for 2021-22. The India Meteorological Department, IMD, has forecast heat wave conditions over West Bengal, Bihar and coastal Andhra Pradesh during the next four days. These conditions are also likely in isolated pockets over Punjab and Haryana during the next two days. The maximum temperatures will be in the range of 40 to 42 degrees Celsius over many parts of plains of northwest India and adjoining Madhya Pradesh and East India. Talking to AIR News, Director General IMD, Dr. Dr. Mrityun J. Mohapatra said the maximum temperatures are above normal by 3 to 5 degrees Celsius over many parts of northwest, east and northeast India. बिहार में वेस्ट बंगाल पे भी हीट वेव कंडीशन जारी है पूर्वानुमान यही है कि वेस्ट बंगाल और बिहार में हीट वेव कंडीशन नेक्स्ट थ्री डेज के लिए हो सकता है मगर ओडिशा और सेंट्रल पार्ट में थंडरस्टम एक्टिविटी एक्सपेक्टेड है जिसकी वजह से टेंपरेचर फॉल हो सकता है नॉर्थ वेस्ट इंडिया में भी एक वेस्टर्न डिस्टर्बेंस अभी मूव कर रहा है जिसकी वजह से जम्मू एंड कश्मीर हिमाचल प्रदेश उत्तराखंड में रेन और थंडरस्टॉप होगा हरियाणा पंजाब और भी आइसोलेटेड प्रदेश में आज कल थंडरस्टॉम और रेन होने का भी संभावना at the Indian Grand Prix 4 in Bengaluru, Shirley Singh has won in women's long jump. Union Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur has congratulated Shirley on her win. In a series of tweets, Mr. Thakur said, with a personal best of 6.76 meters, she is now the holder of the second longest jump in India's history and has qualified for the Asian Games. He said Shelley's win at the Indian Grand Prix 4 is a major milestone and will have a significant impact on the future of Indian sports. In IPL cricket today, Royal Challengers Bangalore will lock horns with Chennai Super Kings at M. Chinnaswamy Stadium in Bangalore at 7.30 p.m. Last night, Rajasthan Royals beat Gujarat Titans by three wickets at Ahmedabad. Put into bat first, Gujarat made 177 runs for the loss of seven wickets in the stipulated 20 overs. In reply, the visitors overhauled the target, losing seven wickets in 19.2 overs. And now, for a look at today's newspapers, it's over to Renu Kataria. Thank you, Sarabjit. Will the, with the alleged irregularities in the 2021-22 Delhi excise policy rocking the capital, Kejriwal questioned by CBI in excise case is the lead headline in the Hindustan Times. The Hindu prominently takes note, UP government forms judicial commission to investigate killing of Atik brother. In light of Apex Court's recent ruling that banks need to grant an opportunity for personal hearing before declaring a borrower account as fraud, CBI files plea in SC seeking clarity on fraud classification order states the business line of Hindu. In the chaos-stricken nation, over 56 killed as rival groups in army battle for control of Sudan, states the Asian Age. The statesman informs that Indian national hit by a stray bullet dies in Sudan. Four Indians among 16 killed in fire at residential building in Dubai, notes the Hindustan Times. And finally, nestled in the picturesque snow-clad mountains at an altitude of over 12,000 feet in Rudraprayag, Tumnath Temple may get national importance tag, informs the pioneer. And with that, it's back to you, Sarabjit. Thank you, Renu. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Five-day Army Commanders Conference to discuss emerging security scenarios and other matters begins today. Second Health Working Group meeting set to begin in Goa today. G20 Agricultural Chief Scientist to meet in Varanasi. President Rob Murmu to confer National Panchayat Awards in New Delhi this morning. 
death toll rises to 32 in Bihar huge tragedy and in sports Shelly Singh qualifies for Asian Games logging second longest jump in India's history and with that we end the morning news have a nice day